I'm Maria. This is Friar Roderick here from AaronMaria.com, and we're at the State Capitol in Hartford, Connecticut. We have here a bunch of seminarians from this, um, the Holy Apostles Seminary, which is uh, the main seminary in Connecticut, but also um, has many seminaries from other places in the country. We have here Father Doug Mosey. How are you doing, Father? Doing very fine. Thank you very much, Friar. Are you the uh, rector of the seminary? I am the rector of the seminary, and these are our, not only our seminarians, but we have some staff members here. We have some of our lay undergraduate students here, so it's a uh, Holy Apostles. Our mission is to cultivate Catholic leaders, both ordained, consecrated, right. and lay. So we're here in good numbers from all three divisions. Which is unusual. Right? You don't usually see so many black um, shirts and, and, uh, and white collars here in the state capitol. Well, we need to be here because this issue that we're facing today, which is a threat to religious liberty, not only for Catholics, but for all men and women of conscience is uh, a fundamental issue, and if uh, we allow uh, these, this bill as it's currently uh, proposed right. to pass through, it will have serious consequences to uh, many, many of our citizens, but certainly our Catholic institutions and uh, some of the things that have happened in other states right. we're trying to ensure will not happen here in Connecticut. Right, so we have a uh, strong precedence of problems in other states um, based on other problems, like, like Massachusetts and New Jersey, right? That's and correct, and as you may know that the Catholic Charities of Boston had to refrain now to shut down their adoption agency uh, simply because of the uh, so-called non-discriminatory planks uh, that uh, would compel them to offer children into... Right. Uh, situations that are just contrary to natural law right. and uh, contrary to the whole history and tradition of the United States, and right. we're here to defend yeah. that right. and see that it doesn't happen in Connecticut. Yes, yeah, so we're talking about the SB 899, which is the Kerrigan case, uh, the Supreme Court case, being codified in the, in the law. And so we worry about conscious clauses being put in, con uh, cl clauses for protection of consciousness, right? Yes, that's correct. There is a conscience clause in the bill as proposed, but right. it's very weak. Right. And it has all kinds of, uh, of uh, provisions that would be very, very contradictory to the American tradition right. based on religious liberty right. and uh, very problematic uh, to Catholic institutions but to other institutions, problematic to what would be caught in the public schools and where many... Catholics and many people of uh, good conscience send their children. So right. all of these, it opens right. a Pandora's box. So what we are supporting the amendment that's being proposed by the Canadian, the Connecticut Catholic Conference, that is a strong and uh, upholds the traditional conscience rights right. of freedom of religion right. in the state of Connecticut, the Constitution state itself. So. Right. Very it's a good important. point because it is uh, the Constitution state and it is there, uh, therefore uh, an important state in that regard. Uh, that we're, all, we're sort of the, uh, the avant garde in this regard, so we have to get it done right here. And this is more than just a Catholic issue at, at your state, and this is an uh, issue for all people of good conscience. And all. And, um, but you're here to, to sh with your seminarians to show that this is very, very important, right? We're here to first and foremost support the. Connecticut Catholic Conference and their amendment to this particular bill, which would ensure the fundamental religious liberty that's important to Catholics and to many citizens here in the state of Connecticut. So we're here to be in solidarity with the Connecticut Catholic Conference, with Archbishop Mansell, right. Bishop Cody of Norwich, and also with Bishop Laurie of Bridgeport. So we stand behind them 100%. I've seen a lot of unity based on this. It's really drawn a lot of Catholics together, and we've seen a lot more people here coming from uh, Catholic churches and seminaries. And uh, But this is uh, very beautiful here to see so many priests here and so many seminarians here. How many seminarians do you have at your, at your uh, uh, seminary? We have 80 seminarians from 17 different dioceses and seven different religious communities. So you see different habits here. Father Daniel from the Franciscan Friars of the Renewal, and uh, we have... Uh, uh, brother uh, uh, Michael Mary from uh, Mother Michael Mary, but uh, so from the uh, uh, Marys, two different Marys. We got a lot of Marys. So uh, from the Knights of the Holy Eucharist from Hansville, and uh, a whole plethora. Brother Zachary's from the Fathers of Mercy, and 
from uh, Saginaw Diocese, Bishop Carlson, the new Archbishop designate of uh, the, the Archdiocese of St. Louis, and uh, Maurizio is an arch here a seminarian from the Archdiocese of Hartford, Henry Aguadello from the uh, Diocese of Norwich, and Deacon Reggie Norman and uh, is here from the Diocese of Bridgeport. So we have all Connecticut dioceses great, covered. Great. What a wonderful uh, show and what a wonderful um, example of, 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 of great Christian outpouring here and uh, great Christian leadership. God bless you all, and thank you, Father Doug. Thank you. And going on to victory. So Keep the prayers going. I'm Maria. Thank you so much. And thank you for your presence and uh, getting the word out to, to so many. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. Father Doug. This is Friar Roderick here for AirMaria.com, and God bless you. I'm Maria.